In a 398-17 vote, the House just passed an anti-Palestinian, anti-BDS resolution. And these types of resolutions and anti-BDS bills, they keep coming up. They won't go away. You defeat one, another one pops up. And this is just the latest attempt to silence people who speak out against the numerous human rights abuses of Israel. So this is just a constant battle, and it will continue to be a constant battle for the foreseeable future. And let me remind you that this resolution comes at a time when members of Congress should be standing up for freedom of speech because 27 states have already enacted anti-BDS legislation, and about a dozen other states are currently considering anti-BDS legislation. So let's go ahead and call this what it is. This is a crackdown on the First Amendment. Because the government does not get to tell me what types of protests and political speech I am or am not allowed to engage in. But what do these types of BDS laws look like in practice? Well, one teacher from Texas was fired because she refused to sign a pro-Israel anti-BDS loyalty pledge. I love my job a lot, and I've always wanted um, to be in a job that was in the service field, because I know I'm making a difference. Uh, this year, I got a new contract uh, with new compliances, and I came across one that shocked me. of boycotting any products uh, that supports Israel is to put pressure on the Israeli government to change its treatment, the inhumane treatment of the Palestinian people. Having grown up as a Palestinian, I know firsthand the oppression and the struggle that Palestinians face on a daily basis. You know, I have to set an example for my kids. We gotta stand up for what's the justice and for right and equal opportunity for everybody and, um, and humane conditions. And so for me, it was an easy decision in that aspect. Um, you know, I, I, so I, ha I could not sign it. I was forced to depart from my job uh, because I will not sign it and I cannot return back um, if I don't sign it. I have been here in the States for over 30 years. I'm an American citizen. I, f I follow the law and so I, am, I have a luxury of having these rights which many people in other countries do not have. It infringed on all my principles. And on top of that, my right to speech and also right to protest. It's baffling that they can throw this down our throats, you know, and decide to protect another country's economy versus protect our constitutional rights. I knew that I had to do something because I knew it's gonna affect more than just me. It may affect also my kids. So I knew that something had to be done and I couldn't just let it pass by. This is happening in America. She lost her job because she refused to sign a pledge committing to not engage in any BDS-related political activity. I mean, this is one of the biggest attacks on free speech in recent history. Where's all the free speech warriors? And this passed overwhelmingly, again, which is the worst aspect about this. So we need people in Congress to speak out against these types of efforts to silence criticism of Israel, but we have basically no one. Now, we're going to get to who did and did not vote for this because there were 17 people that voted against this, but some people who voted for this might actually surprise you. Now, this is such a brazen attack on free speech that three federal courts thus far have ruled that these types of laws do in fact violate the First Amendment. But Congress, they have the chance to lead on this issue and protect free speech after one state, after another, after another, have continued to strip away First Amendment protections. But they failed miserably to do that today. Now, the reason why BDS is so crucial is because how else are we going to put pressure on Israel? This is a peaceful form of protest. It's nonviolent, and clearly it's effective because Israel doesn't want any other country to engage in BDS. It's a reason why APEC is trying to scramble to get all lawmakers on board to shut down this movement because obviously it's effective. Boycotting actually works because if you put economic pressure on a country who is in a position of power, who basically controls whether or not there will or won't be peace, that actually can 
affect change. But unfortunately, not very many people in Congress are willing to actually stand up for what's right and speak out and, you know, be on the right side of history. And what's interesting is that right before the House passed this resolution, Israel just demolished 70 Palestinian apartments in East Jerusalem, which was condemned by the UN and France. But rather than standing up and affirming that American citizens have the right to join Palestinians and peacefully resist the illegal Israeli occupation and modern day apartheid, our government chose to do the opposite. They chose to say, no, actually, if you want to participate in BDS, which is basically the only thing that will be conducive to peace since everything else has failed, um, we are going to move to punish you. Now, this is just a resolution. It's not a bill, but still, everything matters. You are now on the record if you voted for this as being against free speech and taking the stand of the oppressor and abandoning the oppressed. Now, for more details on this, we go to Katie Agoba and Addie Barrett of BuzzFeed News, who write, The measure, House Resolution 246, opposes efforts to delegitimize the state of Israel and the global boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement targeting Israel. According to the bill's text, BDS, a movement which began in 2005, calls for groups to apply economic pressure to Israel to achieve Palestinian independence in the Middle East. The Senate passed a similar bill amid concerns that the legislation violates the First Amendment. The bill passed the House Tuesday, 398 to 17, with five members voting present to abstain from the vote. Sixteen Democrats opposed the bill, including Omar and Tlaib. Just one Republican voted against the measure, Representative Thomas Massey. Two weeks ago, Tlaib, the first Palestinian-American woman in Congress, took to Twitter to denounce the resolution, saying it silences the opposition to Israel's blatantly racist policies that demonizes both Palestinians Palestinians and Ethiopians. Omar agrees. The first year Congresswoman unsuccessfully tried to quell the resolution before the Foreign Affairs Committee, of which she is a member, last week, and then introduced her own resolution to defend the pro Palestinian movement. While her resolution doesn't mention BDS, Israel, or Palestine explicitly, it states that the House affirms that all Americans have the right to participate in boycotts in pursuit of civil and human rights at home and abroad, as protected by the First Amendment to the Constitution. Constitution, Omar's office said in a statement. In a statement on Twitter Tuesday, the Palestinian BDS National Committee called the bill a McCarthyite anti-Palestinian measure that is based on lies and aims to demonize peaceful resistance to Israel's military occupation and apartheid. Representative Grijalva, one of the Democrats who opposed the bill Tuesday night, said he voted against it because of my constant and very strong belief in free will expression. You know, this is not the first time I've taken that vote. Now, on the House floor, Rashida Tlaib, who, as the article mentions, is a Palestinian American, one of the first two Muslim women elected to Congress, spoke out and I wanted to share what she had to say because she makes some very poignant and important points here. I stand before you as the granddaughter of Palestinian grandmother, my city, who yearns to experience equality, human dignity, and freedom. I stand before you, the daughter of Palestinian immigrants, parents who experience being stripped of their human rights, the right to freedom of travel, equal treatment. So I can't stand by and watch this attack on our freedom of speech and the right to boycott the racist policies of the government and the state of Israel. I love our country's freedom of speech, Madam Speaker. Dissent is how we nurture democracy and grow to be better and more humane and just. And this is why I oppose Resolution 243. All Americans have a right, a constitutional right, guaranteed by the First Amendment to freedom of speech to petition their government and to participate in boycotts. Speech in pursuit of civil and human rights at home and abroad is protected by our First Amendment. That is one reason why our First Amendment is so powerful. With a few exceptions, the government is simply not allowed to discriminate against speech based on its viewpoint or its speaker. The right to boycott is deeply rooted in the fabric of our country. What was the Boston Tea Party but a boycott? Where would we be now without the boycott led by civil rights activists in the 1950s and 60s, like the Montgomery bus boycott and the United Farm Workers grape boycott? Some of this country's most important advances in racial equality and equity and workers' rights has been achieved through collective action protected by our Constitution. 
Americans of conscience have long and proud history of participating in boycotts specifically to advocate for human rights abroad. Americans boycotted Nazi Germany in response to dehumanization, imprisonment, and genocide of Jewish people. In the 1980s, many of us in this very body boycotted South African goods in the fight against apartheid. Our, free, our right to free speech is being threatened with this resolution. It sets a dangerous precedent because it attempts to delegitimize a certain people's political speech and to send a message that our government can and will take action against speech it doesn't like. Madam Speaker, the Supreme Court has time and time again recognized that expressive conduct is protected by the Constitution. From burning a flag to baking a cake, efforts to restrict and target that protected speech run the risk of eroding the civil rights that form the foundation of our democracy. All Americans have the right to participate in boycotts, and I oppose all legislative efforts that target speech. Our, I urge Congress, state governments, and civil rights leaders from all communities to preserve our Constitution, preserve our Bill of Rights, and preserve the First Amendment's guarantee of freedom of speech by opposing HRES 246 and the boycott, anti-boycott efforts wherever they rise. So everything that she said there is common sense. If you're progressive, this is a no-brainer. This is one of the easiest issues. Of course, you stand up for freedom of speech and the First Amendment, and you stand up for Palestinians and their allies who want to peacefully assemble in order to fight oppression. So let's get to the vote now. Who voted correctly? Who voted against this anti-BDS resolution? Well, predictably, many progressives did in fact do the right thing. That includes Raul Grijalva, Pramila Jayapal, Barbara Lee, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and Mark Pocan. So those are the progressives that voted correctly. But as I stated earlier, not everyone voted the right way. Now again, I want to emphasize that this shouldn't be difficult. It's not difficult. This is easy. This is one of the easiest votes of your career, theoretically speaking. If you are for free speech and against modern day apartheid, then you vote no on this resolution. But there were several progressives who got this wrong. And that includes Ro Khanna, Ayanna Presley, and Tulsi Gabbard. Now, it also includes Katie Porter, but I don't personally know enough about her to deduce, you know, whether or not she's progressive or not, but she still messed up, so it's disgusting. But I mean, I don't understand how if you are Ro Khanna, Ayanna Presley, and Tulsi Gabbard, you can get this wrong. Tulsi Gabbard is running for president as the peace candidate. Do you honestly believe that peace is even possible without a peaceful movement like BDS? How are you going to achieve peace when Israel has said, no, I am not going to go back to the 1967 borders. In fact, we're going to take more land from Palestinians illegally. Even if the UN condemns us, well, the United States says that we can do it and they have the biggest military. So uh, what are you going to do about it? How is peace achievable, Tulsi, if you don't support BDS? Do you have a solution? Because you haven't come up with one yet. Ro Khanna, he has been leading the charge to stop us from giving weapons to Saudi Arabia, which means that we have been complicit in the genocide that they're carrying out in Yemen. So he seems to care about human rights, but yet he decided to vote in a way that was basically a slap in the face to everyone who's speaking out in favor of Palestinians and speaking out against Israel's genocide. And Ayanna Presley, she's new in Congress, but you know, being a member of the squad, she should side with people from her squad. AOC, Tlaib, and Omar made the right decision. But Ayanna Presley from the beginning, she was someone who I kept at distance, right? She's progressive. It seems like she had a change of heart. But back in 2016, she was arguing that Hillary Clinton was progressive. I am an unapologetic progressive. I know what a progressive looks like, and I know what they do. And uh, you cannot do in three days or 30 days what Secretary Clinton has been doing for 30 years. She is a progressive. So uh, that was a big red flag. And now she kind of proved here, maybe I'm not the real deal. Maybe I'm not as progressive as my fellow squad members. 
unbelievable for people who have been consistently progressive to vote this way is just it's bizarre right how could you do something like this and betray the people who you purport to represent in such a brazen way so let me go to their responses and then i'll kind of pontificate a little bit more because i called them out on twitter and i asked why these progressives chose to side with centrist democrats and republicans Rokana actually responded saying, I respect what people want to do. Nothing in the resolution infringes on anyone's First Amendment rights. I do not believe BDS, given the economic ties with Israel, is practical or would lead to peace. That's a joke. I will continue to speak out against new settlements and for Palestinian human rights. And then Ayanna Presley responded to someone else's criticism saying, there are a lot of anti-BDS bills out there that infringe on First Amendment rights at the state and federal level level. In my view, House Resolution 246 wasn't one of them. What I heard resounding in my community was that voting yes on this resolution affirmed to my constituents raised in the Jewish faith Israel's right to exist, a view I share as a supporter of a two-state solution. Now, I don't get that line about, you know, Israel's right to exist. They exist. They're a state. They're recognized. So what more do you want? This is just, these are not good explanations. Now, at the time I'm recording this, Tulsi Gabbard hasn't said anything about this. Uh, Ro Khanna has actually reached out to me and agreed to come on the program. So hopefully that will happen soon next week. I'm hoping that he doesn't pull a Tulsi Gabbard and reach out and say, hey, Mike, I'd love to come on the program. And then six months later, they're nowhere to be found. And look, maybe I'm just being too harsh. Maybe I held them to a higher standard than I should have. But I don't view this response from Ro Khanna and Ayanna Presley persuasive at all they're indefensible you made an indefensible vote and now we can see you're struggling to defend it but you can't because again you can't defend what's indefensible it's very difficult to do it's an untenable position but i want to read the response from one of ayana's constituents who i think put it best she says i'm one of your jewish constituents and we are not a monolith many of us support bds or just support free speech and protest this is an apac bill and is actively harmful to a two-state solution what's with the raised in jewish faith phrasing also it's lip service to two-state the bill doesn't even separate bds of israel versus bds of settlements this is ipac b and Trump's goal to blur the line between Israel and greater Israel, opening up the door to full annexation. Don't claim that your vote is what your Jewish constituents want. It's what AIPAC wants. And that's exactly it. If you voted in favor of this, you sided with AIPAC. Congratulations. I hope you feel good about yourself. So this is not defensible. What Ro Khanna and Ayanna Presley are saying it's not winning me back. <laughs> you know, it's it's not like they're canceled. But I think that if we are going to hold you to a higher standard because you identify as progressive, then you should expect this type of criticism. If you do something that is against the progressive movement, then expect us to call you out for it because this is indefensible. I mean, how can you claim to support free speech and be in favor of human rights, but then make a vote like this? It's just indefensible. Shame on Ro Khanna. Shame on you, Ayanna Presley. And shame on you, Tulsi Gabbard. You're running to be president. Did you not think we would notice? I mean, if you're running to be president, everything that you do currently is going to be scrutinized. So what are you doing? I mean, Tulsi Gabbard, in the last couple of weeks, I don't understand what she's doing. First of all, she came out against impeachment of Donald Trump. So in other words, you don't believe we should hold people in power accountable to the same standards of everyone else? Really? She then defended uh, Joe Biden. Not once, but twice. Okay, that's interesting. And now she is voting um, in favor of an anti-BDS bill. What are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, I mean... If you are going to be the peace candidate, then you should be a leader here. We shouldn't have to be calling you and criticizing you and begging you to stand up for what's easy. If you're progressive, what are you doing? I don't get, I'm genuinely puzzled at the votes here by these progressives. Because again, this is easy. You're playing on the easiest difficulty imaginable. It's as simple as what is one plus one? The answer is two. So why is it that when this battle has been waged across the country and there are so little allies, the people who we would expect to stand up for us the most are choosing to abandon us 
In the post-Obama era, see, we take red flags very, very seriously. We can excuse one or two red flags, but after some time, those red flags begin to add up and we begin to question whether or not you actually are the real deal, whether or not you're actually the person who you say you were. Now, this doesn't erase all of the wonderful things that each of these three progressives has, has done. Absolutely not. But what it does communicate to me is that maybe they're not as progressive as they have been leading us to believe that they were, at least with regard to this issue. And to be fair to them, not many people are, but you'd think if anyone is going to be right on this issue, it would be self-proclaimed progressives. Every single person is so afraid in Congress to stand up to APAC, to speak out against the status quo here. And it's just, it's bizarre. If anyone's going to go against the grain, it's Ro Khanna, Tulsi Gabbard, and Ayanna Presley. We're supporting you because you claim to be progressive. So we hold you by definition to a higher standard because you are progressive. So absolutely, if you do something wrong, I am going to call you out because I hold you to a higher standard. And if you are a supporter of Ro Khanna or Tulsi Gabbard, then you shouldn't self-censor. You shouldn't say, well, you know, I still support them overall, so I guess I'm just going to have to live with this position. No, they represent you. So move them. Get them to move to the position that you want. Because politicians are representing us. These are individuals in the House of Representatives, meaning they represent the people. So if you're not satisfied with the position that they're taking, then you can get them to change that because they're supposed to be representing you, especially if you are in their district, if you're one of their constituents. So don't tell me, oh, well, you know what? I can't criticize Tulsi here because I support her for president. No, you should be speaking out the loudest because your concerns are coming from a good place. She's going to take what you have to say seriously more seriously than anyone else or at least she should so you know it's just this is disappointing it's one of those instances where you just feel heartbroken the last time you know ironically it was ro Khanna and tulsi gabbard who made the correct vote when we needed them they voted against pago but here they let us down and look no politician is perfect right this doesn't mean that we throw ro Khanna, tulsi gabbard and ayanna presley in the garbage and say well we're done with them but it's just a matter of when they mess up and they mess up this badly, we have to hold them accountable. We can't censor ourselves. We have to vocalize our concerns and criticisms because if we don't, how are they going to know to course correct? How are they going to know that they're not doing what we want them to do? Now, again, we shouldn't really have to hold their hands for an issue as black and white as this, but that's not the real world. People are going to mess up and that's the way that politics is. So the point is we have to come together as a community of progressives and demand that anyone who is elected as a progressive and who identifies as progressive do better because they're all we got. We don't have, you know, a hundred progressives in Congress. It's a small handful. So we really count on this handful of progressives to do the right thing, to come through for us, especially in times like this when we need them, when we've been fighting these BDS bills these anti-BDS bills. So for them to disappoint us like this, it's just heartbreaking. And every single person should be outraged. This is not acceptable. It's indefensible. So shame on you, Ro Khanna. Shame on you, Ayanna Presley. And once again, shame on you, Tulsi Gabbard. We believed in you and you let us down. Do better.